on the radio, they were trying to find out if there was anyone else in uh, Vianibi. So I acknowledged and told him that uh, Titai was uh, also sheltered in Vianibi. So they told me that uh, they had a yacht. A yacht in uh, Vianibi also that was swept ashore during the wind. And it had two crew on board. One of the, I think it was, it was Captain Incha, he was stuck down in the cabin. And the other crew could not uh, rescue the captain by himself. He was stuck or couldn't yeah. get out somehow from He was stuck down there and the tide was rising that morning. So it was coming above his knees. And if it came up, he might have drowned. Yes, he would have drowned inside the cabin when he was trapped. So when you heard that from the call, what did you do? <coughs> Well, I had to think twice because at that time the wind was still blowing pretty strong. I waited for about 15 minutes, then I called uh, four of my crew and gave them a radio and sent them off to try and rescue the guy who was trapped in there. It happened at, uh, in the morning. Uh, the weather was still very and I was uh, with the uh, boys went up to rescue. So Captain told us to go and four of us, four of us to have to go and rescue. It was, the wind was really strong and it was choppy, so we had to do the rescue. During the worst part of it, it was about uh, 120 to 130 knots plus wind, and the visibility was near. There was seas blowing onto the boat, onto Twitter. Yeah, when we received the call from the captains, uh, our sails or masts it's ripped off from the wind. That time the wind still strong, and uh, we tried to suit up, so we got our gears and our boys, like uh, three others and plus me. We went to, and we take the small things out there when we reach there. Uh, even the guy who called for is just standing there, it's freak out, and can't do anything else. Yeah, yeah when we got there, the, um, the yacht was capsized on his port side, facing the shore, like almost completely over. It was almost like jumped in. Taking in water, or? Uh, there was some water inside, I'm not too sure if it was taken in water, probably when it was still rough, but yeah, there was water inside that was coming in. Uh, so when we got in, it was pretty confined, and there was the guy just lying in a really awkward position. Well, he's been here, the whole thing, the whole boat just covered with blood. I mean, the whole mattress where he lying on, and uh, his leg was grabbing to the to the bed because the boat was almost like half deep. People and uh, we tried to pull him uh, upstream so we can step on her. And he said he had some pains on his back, and we that we just recover his uh, neck. And then we tried to, it's very narrow inside there, even me, I couldn't, I could walk freely inside, I had to go down like this whole thing. Get out or he no, was no, unconscious? He was, or? he was too weak to move, okay. too weak to move, there was blood on his neck, his arms just, all the mattress blood everywhere. So, just up to him then, slowly we all helped carry him out. How did you get him out? There was like a passage you just had to yeah, lift him? Yeah, the passage was really, like really narrow, it was a really small job. So we all had to sit down, carry him up. Some of the guys had to come in from other positions in the toilet and all, and just keep slowly carry him through. So I'm lying down there with blood. So we all went inside and carried him outside to the watch, into our life raft, into our boat, and head back to, to the, our boat house this time. There was this uh, injured person lying on the floor and uh, another and a crew from the yacht. You managed to my four crew. Managed to bring the, the other two crew back onto Tuitai? Yes. How did you do that? We had uh, laid him down on a, on one of those uh, head scow. Covered him with a blanket and lifted him up. Lifted him up.